In this video, we're going to have a look at the graphing and plotting tools in MotionPerfect 4, TRIO's front-end motion program for programming our controllers. So what we have is a simple little basic program that is running this path that is in the help for the move circle command or, or move, move circuit command. So we're just going to run this as a a template motion profile so that we can um, explore different parts of the uh, graphing tool here, the scope we have. So the scope has uh, several modes of operation. Um, it has a down here uh, an XY standard uh, time-based plotting tool, an XY for 2D plotting, um, uniform scale, same thing for the XY, and then a 3D mode for doing uh, more advanced 3D plotting. So if we just kind of go through the tools here real quick, um, by default you have four channels. You can add additional channels by clicking this button here. You can uh, enable and disable the channels here. You know, typically automatic is, is good enough. Um, I use manual often, but uh, either one will work. Then you pick the signal that you want to look at. Um, most of the time you'll look at uh, velocity profiles or position profiles, but you can look at a lot of different things. Um, and you can find those by just going through these groups here, uh, such as inputs. You can look at process data, uh, system data. Um, typically it's axis. Uh, you can look at all of the axis parameters, so there's quite a bit to look at. Um, but by and large, you're most of the time going to look at some velocity profiles, usually M speed or M, M speed F, which is a filtered M speed, so it looks a little bit better. Um, also, uh, position wise, in that group, you'll look at typically uh, M pause, which is measure position or D pause. So, in the case here, we're going to look at a couple of um, velocity profiles for axis one and two, which we have set up to run here. Um, the scope has the ability to trigger from a program, and that is done by this button here. You can manually run it, just free run, or trigger it by the program if you want to synchronize it to begin plotting at a motion start. Down here you have a single or repeat, so if you just want to do a single pass, you can do that. Um, settings, it's good to go in here and widen this up full resolution slide this all the way over or fit the scale, fit the display. Uh, once you get that set up, then um, it's a good idea to check your, your numeric values. You'll see your min and max here. And then if we say run, uh, well we, do, we did set up our time base here for 200 milliseconds per division already. And at this point, I should be able to just go ahead and run my moves program and it'll do one pass of a velocity profile for each motor. So what we're plotting is the profile for that uh, oval square shape that we saw there. So this would be the first pass that I would look at to run and um, maybe do some tuning alterations here. So maybe modify my tuning gains to, to get this velocity looking a little bit better. Um, the noise you see here is just simply the noise uh, from the sampling, because this is a uh, ethercat axes. So that's the uh, the basic X, Y, or time-based um, plot that we have. Uh, we click this here, we'll go into a uh, 2D plot, but let's um, now plot position rather than um, speed to make it look a little more meaningful. So we'll go to there. And then automatically that same selection will appear now in my other pull downs. Uh, so, what we want to do here is let's uh, increase our time. Typically, you want one or two seconds for a 2D plot. And we'll take it up to there. And we'll just run this now. So, we should see that shape. So, there we see the shape, and we can. Uh, link these two together here, which is what that little lock is. So when I change this guy, this one changes with me. So there's my 2D path, so I can see that I'm doing the correct motion. And it should be starting at this position here. 
absolute x uh, 0 and 6, which is here, and then starts up and makes the profile run. Um, continuing that, uh, we can should be able to see a plot on the, the, the 3D plot. So here we have a plot in our 3D dimension. Um, we can move this around. We can rotate it a bit. Um, so what we're doing here is we're doing the same shape, but we're adding a, a Z component, which is right here, to get it to, to plot vertically. Uh, the nice thing about this tool is you can zoom in here, and you can put your cursor at various points here. And you can see what uh, the coordinate, the XYZ coordinate is. If you right click on the back area here, you can put a grid on the screen for you and you can see what's happening here. So we can look around, we can move this around, we can go outside this circle here and you can rotate. If you stay inside the circle, you can just manipulate the 2D path. So it gives you a good visual on what you might be, uh, uh, what your profile might look like in space. So again, you can kind of move your cursor around here and find those those 3D points. So that's the uh, the basic scoping tool that we have. So in addition to the basic scoping um, tool facility in Trio's Motion Perfect software, we have some advanced. Uh, visualization features that um, are in the latest versions. Um, this is a 3D visualization tool that um, gives the customer the ability to bring in um, various uh, SolidWorks models uh, as a uh, OBJ file. So in this case uh, we want to simulate a uh, XYZ tilt rotate gantry system. So uh, this tool lets us define axes, X, Y, Z, tilt, and rotate, and also um, define the, the movement, for example. So this is the movement of my X, so I can give it a range of travel. Uh, the joint axis, you set up um, which orientation you want it to move on and so on. Uh, whether or not it has a parent or not, and so as you build the axes on top of the lower axes, they, they become a parent-child relationship. So for example, Y uh, has a parent X. So as I move uh, Y around this way, uh, it will be carried along with the X movement. So that's the uh, parent relationship there. And the model parts, um, these are parts of the model that you want to specify as part of that joint. So that is all done in this definition side here. And the different colors indicate linear motion versus rotational motion. So once we get that set up, we can then define, OK, we want the x-axis to connect to axis 1. And we want the y to be axis 0, z to be axis 2, 4, and 3. So they just happen to fall this way for this example. So once we get that defined, and then we do some um, scaling set up in our program here. So that's uh, setting this particular frame of uh, kinematic frame up for this configuration. Uh, and that is these parameters here. These parameters here in the table will set up the dimensions um, of the X, Y, Z uh, travel units, and then the tilt and rotate and some other scaling that goes on here, uh, and tool offset and so on. So once we get that all set, we should be able to run this thing. Uh, we run it just simply by clicking the run tool here, and then we run our test program. And this simulates welding corners on a block. It 
So it compensates for the tool offset and the rotational axes uh, as needed. So that's one example of the 3D visualization tool. Another example of the 3D visualization tool is a rotary cutter, which is very common. Uh, there is a graphic or an import from uh, an OBJ file um, that was done for this. Uh, again, we um, this one's a bit simpler, and we define the cutter axis, and we define the conveyor axis, and we can test it again based on uh, the scaling that we want. So in this case, the, the conveyor is a linear axis, and the rotary knife or the rotary cutter is a, of course a rotary axis and we define the distances and movement for that. Once that is done we link the axes, in this case just 0 and 1 and we have a program here that will run uh, our flex link command so we run that program and run the cutter and this should uh, make a cut of this length here which is the markings on the conveyor and so we can uh, use this tool to help develop our program and we can do things like speed up the conveyor with some program variables that might be on the HMI and we can also change cut lengths we want to add that to cut at every other cut we can do that and we can simulate that so uh, a very good tool for developing programs and debugging and seeing if things are moving as you would expect. The final and most advanced feature that is a new feature in the tool is the robot simulation and teach tool. So we have a couple of arms available, um, six axis arms, SCARA arms, that you can um, teach points and program a, a system to, to play those points back. So, for example, we've opened this arm up and we've predefined it to these axes here. One, two, three, four, five, six uh, on the whole, all the joints. And the tool here to do that is the robot teach tool. So here I have, uh, I've already programmed five global targets or GTAs we call them. And if you wanted to add another point, you can go into the teach screen and you can jog the robot arm around and teach it a new point and once you teach that point you can say teach and give it a name and it'll take these coordinates and it'll append it to that program um, that program being this predefined program by the, the software so robot global targets is um, generated by that tool and uses these comments start and stop line that identify what uh, where the points are. So by taking those points, uh, I took a program and using a new move joint command or move linear command, I'm now able to execute those commands. So with the robot tool running here, I should be able to run this motion program here and it should play back those points for me. So these are the five points that have been pre-programmed and I've made a program variable here to let me increase the robot speed so once it gets through the five points it will show me the increased speed so again, a very easy way to teach some complex motion um, with the kinematic system uh, that we have built into the firmware here and be able to teach robots and uh, other more sophisticated mechanisms. So that is the TRIO 3D tool in the latest Motion Perfect version 4.